To identify intervals of increase and decrease, the main rule we need to keep in mind is that we always read from left to right. That's a fairly natural order to read in, but there are situations where maybe the graph will trick us and get us to look in the other direction. For example, if we look at this second graph, we see this arrow over here. The arrow is pointing more off to the left. Sometimes that gets us thinking backwards. We want to avoid that, right? Okay, for now we're going to look at the first one. We see that this starts at a fixed point here at negative 2. So my first interval begins at negative 2. And I can see that that function is increasing because it's going up until we get up to this point right here. I'm going to write my intervals anytime it changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing I'm going to use an open interval endpoint there but there are some differences with different textbook authors in that particular convention. So this is not an absolute rule this is just how we're going to do it in this particular lesson. Um, so that first interval of increase, it looks like it starts at that point that's around x equals negative 2, and it goes up to the point 0, 2. Here's the other thing we need to be careful about with these intervals of increase and decrease. We absolutely must identify them only by the x values. The y values are the function outputs. We're trying to describe the behavior of those function outputs in terms of the input variable. So all I care about for this first interval is that it starts at x equals negative 2 and that it stops at x equals 0. I don't want to include the information about what that y value is. So here's that first interval, negative 2 up to 0. And I said I would indicate these with an open bracket. I will also comma separate these instead of writing them with a union symbol because each interval is an interval over which the function is increasing. It doesn't necessarily mean that the function is increasing over a whole union of these intervals. If that distinction isn't very clear, I would say don't worry too much about it. But a union symbol can be left out here. If you put a union symbol in an answer, it's also not the end of the world. It's just not technically correct. Okay, so let's go on to what's happening next in this function. We're looking at an interval of decrease starting here. So I'm going to use a lavender color to highlight that part of the graph. Looks like we pass the x-axis and it's still decreasing and we stay decreasing all the way until we get to this dip right here. We're changing from decreasing to increasing here, so again I'm going to use an open circle. Now again, only the x values here. It looks like we started at 0, and we continue to decrease all the way until x equals 5, so I'm going to write that interval as 0, 5. After that, we are increasing one more time. And it looks like because we have an endpoint here, we stop. This function ends on an on a increase right, right here at x equals 8. So this last interval, we can go ahead and use a closed bracket there. I'm going to put this under increase. This goes from 5 up to 8. This is the kind of situation where the interval notation can be confusing. Note that this is an interval of x values. It looks like an ordered pair, and the context here is a graph with ordered pairs on it. But this is an interval of x values. We never use ordered pairs at all when we're talking about intervals of increase and intervals of decrease. So how we express our answer is absolutely as important as how we identify what those intervals are. How we talk about them correctly and clearly is a lot of the objective here. All right, so let's go on to the next one. We'll do this probably a little quicker. 
it looks like, again, we're making ourselves read this from left to right, even though that arrow might kind of get our thinking going in the other direction. This one starts out decreasing, and there is no left endpoint to this interval of decrease, and therefore, this first interval we're going to say goes from negative infinity up to negative 2. Again, just x values here. We then switch over to increasing. We stay increasing right through the origin and past it and up to this hilltop here, which occurs at x equals 2. So that first interval of increase goes from negative 2 to positive 2. We then switch back to decreasing. And we stay decreasing all the way up to x equals 4. So these are not difficult questions. It's easy to identify these intervals on the graph. By far, the most common mistakes have to do with identifying a y value instead of an x value, or maybe indicating something's going to infinity when really it's only going to infinity and y, for example, um, or occasionally stopping an interval where it does something other than change direction. Like, for example, right here at the origin, it crosses the x-axis. Sometimes people accidentally stop their intervals at these x-intercepts. As long as it didn't change direction and start increasing again instead of decreasing or vice versa, we don't stop the interval. We just run right past it.